Today I want to share with you how to seal a Mylar bag for long-term food storage, perfect for your prepper pantry. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to click on the little notification bell below. That'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Well, Mylar bags are great for storing dry goods with an oxygen absorber for long-term food storage. In a previous video, I explained to you what the difference is between oxygen absorbers and silica gel packs and when you want to use an oxygen absorber. And I'll be sure to link to that video in the iCards and in the description below so that you can watch that and learn what the differences are. But the bottom line is when you use oxygen absorbers, you need to use foods that have 10% or less moisture. So today, using this Mylar bag and an oxygen absorber, we're going to store some white rice. And white rice is perfect for storing in a Mylar bag with an oxygen absorber because it is a dry food with 10% or less moisture. Now also in the description under this video, I'll have a link to a blog post that'll correspond directly with this video where I'll have various links where you can find out about what foods are appropriate for using with oxy oxygen absorbers in addition to white rice. But some examples are things like white flour, which sometimes will be called all-purpose flour or bread flour that has all the bran and germ removed. Whole grain flour cannot be stored in a Mylar bag with an oxygen absorber. It's simply too oily. Now other foods that can be stored in a Mylar bag with an oxygen absorber are whole grains. Now not whole grain flour, but you can store whole grains in their whole form, except for brown rice and barley. And another food that you can store in a Mylar bag with an oxygen absorber are beans. A common question that I get is when you're storing dry foods in a Mylar bag, can you use an oxygen absorber and a silica gel pack? And the answer is no. The reason really is twofold. Number one, you're already storing a dry food in a Mylar bag with an oxygen absorber that's gonna be very airtight and moisture isn't a problem. So you don't really need something to absorb moisture. But more importantly, the reason why you don't use a silica gel pack when storing foods in a Mylar bag with an oxygen absorber is because the oxygen, uh, the oxygen absorber actually needs that little bit of moisture that's 10% or less that's in the food to be activated. Oxygen absorbers are filled with an iron powder. And what happens is a chemical reaction takes place when you put them in a Mylar bag with a dry food that has 10% or less moisture. That little bit of moisture causes the iron power, powder to rust. And now I'm not a scientist, but apparently the chemical reaction that takes place in the process of that iron power, powder rusting pulls out all of the oxygen from the packaging in which it's placed. Now, what size of oxygen absorber do you need? And that's a good question. It all depends on what size Mylar bag you're using and what food you're putting into your Mylar bag. And again, if you open the description below underneath this video, I'll link you over to my blog post yes. and I'll have a link to the, I believe it's called the US Emergency, USA Emergency Supply, uh, which is a website that lists all of the different size Mylar bags that are made. And then it lists what size oxygen absorber you need for the Mylar bag. Plus, it lists one more level of information. Not only do you need to know what size Mylar bag you have for what size oxygen absorber you're going to need, it does vary based on what you're putting into your Mylar bag. So if you're putting rice into a Mylar bag, which is very small and there's very little space between each grain, so there's less oxygen in there, 
there's going to be one size of oxygen absorber as opposed to say if you're putting beans in your mylar bag which are larger and there's more oxygen uh, between each bean that's touching and then you need a different size a little larger oxygen absorber but they have a wonderful chart that walks you through ju not just the size of the mylar bag that you're using not just the uh, size of the oxygen absorber you need based on that mylar bag but then it also lists what are you putting into the mylar bag and then you just look at the chart and bingo you've got the size uh, oxygen absorber that you need now what you're going to need to get ready to seal your mylar bag obviously is your mylar bag and I recommend that you look uh, when you buy these look for mylar bags that are heavy duty and ones that you don't see any light coming through when you hold when you hold them up to the light now if you're not buying them in person and you're buying them online you just want to look for terminology that says things like heavy duty mylar bag next you're going to want your oxygen absorbers and then you're going to want some sort of straight edge. Uh, I've just got a um, yardstick here, but if you have a ruler, that'll work too. But you want to make sure that the ruler is just completely fat, flat, not one that's beveled in any way. And then you're going to need an iron and just any old household iron will do. Uh, also, I don't have one of these, but if you have one of those flat iron uh, tools that ladies use on their hair, those can also be used to seal mylar bags. Now, I also believe there is a special tool that is sold for specific, that's specifically made for sealing mylar bags, but a household iron or a flat iron uh, hair tool both work well. Now, in a one gallon mylar bag, I find that I can comfortably fit five pounds of white rice. Now, I don't weigh this out, but you certainly could put your mylar bag onto a food scale and get exactly perfectly five pounds. But I'm gonna show you to the point where I like to fill my mylar bag, which then makes it easy for me to lay it flat and to seal it. Now, before you start filling your mylar bag, you want to write on it what you're going to put in it. And this is especially important if you're doing a lot of mylar bags in one sitting, because you don't want to seal them up with different things. And then you don't want to seal them up and then say, oh my gosh, which ones have the rice, which ones have the beans? You know, that can happen. So uh, just take some sort of permanent marker. I really like for the mylar bags, I like this, um, this is a Bic and it's called Mark It. And I find that I really like this brand. I have nothing to do with the company. This is just a brand that I like uh, more so than the Sharpie. I find the Sharpie sometimes smudges, uh, but this uh, marks up the bag beautifully and uh, it stays in place. So this is white rice, it's jasmine rice. So I'm going to write on my bag jasmine rice and then I'm gonna put how much it is and this is going to be about five pounds and then I'm going to put the date when I'm sealing this and right now we're in September so I'm just going to put nine and then 2020 so then I have that all marked for me and what you'll want to do is mark your bags you know in advance or right before you're filling each one you know whatever works whatever system works best for you but don't forget to do this now, if you're going to be filling a lot of Mylar bags, you want to make sure that you have all your bags ready and you have them all filled with whatever you're putting in them before you even open your oxygen absorbers. So I'm going to go ahead and start filling my Mylar bag with my white rice and I'll show you at the point where I feel that it's full enough. So I've got in my Mylar bag what is about five pounds of white rice. Then I like to do just something like this, where I try to compress it as much as possible to get the rice as compacted as possible. And after I do that, my bag is actually filled to about this point. Now, I don't cut anything off the top and then try to seal it here. What I find is easier to do is just keep the bag intact and then go ahead and seal it just along the top here. And then before we leave it to let the oxygen absorber do its work, 
uh, I like to kind of flatten it out so that as the oxygen is absorbed, it just turns out to be a nice little uh, narrow flat bag filled with rice. Now, as we get ready to seal this, what we're going to do again, we're going to open our oxygen absor absorbers at the very last minute. The first thing that we're going to do is turn on our iron, iron and to seal a mylar bag somewhere around 350 degrees Fahrenheit to 400 degrees Fahrenheit works very well. So if your iron lets you set a temperature, you know to set it somewhere in that uh, range. And the same with your flat hair flat iron. If it allows you to set an actual temperature, that's the range that you're looking for, 350 degrees Fahrenheit to about 400 degrees Fahrenheit. What I have found on my iron, which does not indicate the temperature, I have found that number six for cotton works very well. Now, as that's heating up, once it beeps and it tells me my iron is hot enough at the, there we go, at the temperature that I need, then I would get ready to open my oxygen absorber and or my bag of oxygen absorbers. I would cut this open and there are 10 in here. They come in all different amounts in terms of how they're packaged, how they're sold, so on and so forth. I would hopefully be having 10 bags so that I would be using all the oxygen absorbers up in one fell swoop. And if I had 10 bags lined up, I would stick the oxygen absorber in each bag and then just go down my little assembly line, uh, uh, sealing my bags very quickly because it only takes seconds. Now, based on the chart that I mentioned to you earlier at the USA Emergency Supply Site, they recommend that when you're storing white rice in a Mylar bag that's a one gallon size, that you need approximately a 300 uh, cc, I think it stands for cubic centimeters, and that's what I've got here. I've got 10 300 cc oxygen absorbers. So I would be putting one 300 cc oxygen, oxygen absorber into my one uh, gallon Mylar bag filled with about five pounds of rice. Now, if you have uh, 100 cc oxygen absorbers, you'd put in three. Now at that site, if you, it, it also shows that, say for example, uh, you don't have any 100 cc oxygen absorbers, you don't have any 300 cc oxygen absorbers, not to worry. You can put ones in that are es in essence a little bit of overkill. They show uh, if you have a 1000 cc or a 500 cc oxygen absorber that you can put that uh, in this bag. It's just a little more than you need, but if that's all that you have and you're not able to get other sized oxygen absorbers, you can do that. So definitely check out that chart. It's very informative. Now I'm not going to open this bag of oxygen absorbers because I already did open a bag and I've got it here. And what you want to do is say, for example, that you're opening your bag of oxygen absorbers and it has more oxygen absorbers in it than you're going to use at the time when you open it, you want to have a little drawer ready that's got a nice tight seal to it, uh, preferably one that can be airtight. And then you're going to want to put the oxygen absorbers in your jar that you're not going to use, that the ones, if you have any, you've put them all in your Mylar bags, but say you have a few left over, go ahead and put them in a jar and seal it right away. And if you're using a little canning jar like this, that has a canning lid that has the little rubber gasket and then the canning ring, or some people call it the canning band, uh, the, oxy the oxygen absorbers will actually pull out the oxygen in this jar and cause the jar to seal. So they've, they do a little bit of work in there. Um, something that I've also done is use the handheld food saver to pull out some air so as to hopefully preserve my oxygen absorbers as long as possible. Now I'm gonna very quickly, there we go, open this jar. I'm gonna go ahead and drop my oxygen absorber in and I'm gonna seal that up fast. Now what I'm gonna do is with my oxygen absorber, I'm going to gently lay this bag on its side and I'm going to just try to keep it a little tight to try to keep as much air out of, keep as much 
oxygen or air out of the bag, squeeze as much as out as squeeze as much out as possible. And then I'm just going to put the my I'm going to put uh, the top of this mylar bag on my straight edge. And the reason that I'm putting it on a ruler like this that is a straight edge is because I don't want to iron on my cutting board. Uh, so that's why I've got this. And you do need some nice flat surface that is also not rough. Because if I were to just try to seal this mylar bag on my tile here that has grout, this grout is very rough and it could actually cause uh, some tears in the mylar bag. So you want to make sure that everything you're doing is being done on a smooth surface. Then you want to make sure that you got your iron hot enough. Look around, make sure there's no oxygen absorber, make sure that it's in there. I think we've all been guilty on occasion of forgetting to put something in a bag after, and then realizing that only after we've sealed it. So there is a gentleman here on the internet who seals his bag three quarters of the way and then looks around to make sure he, he's put his oxygen absorber in there before he, he seals the last uh, quarter. So that's a clever idea. But again, so you just take your iron and you go right down on your straight edge, right on top of your bag. Don't worry, it's not going to harm your iron. It's going to be just fine. And you'll see it's going to start sealing. So then you're just going to go with your iron all the ways across. And literally within seconds, your bag is sealed. And then you can just check it by taking a look at it. You'll see all done. It seals up beautifully. You can look right along the edge here. There's no gaps and it literally, as I said, it seals in seconds. You go over it with your iron and voila, it's perfect. Now you'll see as you pick this up, you can see this edge is beautifully sealed. There's no gaps. There's no air getting in here. So this is a perfect seal. Now another way, if you do have that uh, flat iron hair tool, you can just leave your bag sitting up like this and then you can just take your little hair tool and just start clipping it. Uh, in essence, you're not cutting it, but you're, clip you're just going across like this with the heat of that flat iron and you're doing the same thing you're doing with your household iron where you're just sealing it right up so that you have a perfectly tight seal where no air is getting in. Now what I like to do is take my bag on a nice smooth surface, again nothing that has anything rough or jagged on it, and then I just like to shake out the rice a little bit just so that everything is a little dis evenly distributed throughout the bag. I don't want to have that big bulk of rice bulging down on the bottom. The reason I like to distribute the rice throughout my bag is as the oxygen absorber begins to do its job and over the next 12, 24 hours, uh, maybe 48 hours, as it starts to pull out all of the oxygen in this bag, it's going to become very hard, almost like a brick. And with the rice nicely distributed through the bag, it becomes a nice little kind of flat envelope style uh, bag as opposed to a chubby bag <laughs> that has a big chunk of rice on the bottom. And I like to do it this way because I find that they're easier to store when they're in that sort of thin type uh, form, you know, thin type shape. But if you want to just leave them up like this, if it's easier for you, uh, depending on where you're leaving these as, they're, uh, as the oxygen absorber is doing its job, that's fine too. It's totally up to you. But if you want to do what I do, just make sure that you do uh, shake it out on a smooth surface that's not going to damage your bag and then just leave it in this uh, position while you know for the next 12 24 or whatever the case may be hours uh, while the oxygen absorber is doing its job now i just want to show you the difference between a bag that was sealed about 12 hours ago and the bag that we just sealed as you'll see you can see the oxygen absorber is doing its job and it's pulling out a lot of the oxygen and it's creating something that is very dense you can see the bag is starting to like crunch up and all the air 
is being, or all the oxygen is being absorbed out of it. And over the next couple of hours, it's going to become, it's quite hard, but it'll become even harder, almost like a brick. And then you'll know that you've had good success getting all of the oxygen out. So hopefully you can see the difference. I'll put them like this when they're side by side. This is your before, and this is about after about 12 hours. And this will become even tighter probably over the next 12 hours, probably after about 24 hours, I find to be the case with rice, that this is going to be very tight and hard like a brick. Now, one thing I wanna mention is that the oxygen absorber, as the name implies, is absorbing oxygen. Now, other things are left behind, those other things being nitrogen. And so some people I have seen on the internet say that if your bag doesn't come out like this, that it still may be okay, and the oxygen, oxygen absorber may have done its job. It's just, uh, it's turning off, my <laughs> iron's turning off. Uh, it may just uh, have the nitrogen in there, and so it's not becoming really tight. But I have not experienced that, so I can't, uh, speak to that uh, exactly, but that's something that is probably worth researching if you find that over time your bag is not tightening up the way this one has. Now, I, as I shared with you in my two previous uh, videos where we talk about oxygen absorbers and silica gel packs and various type of long-term food storage containers, uh, and I'll put all these videos in a playlist and I'll link to them in the description underneath this video so that you'll have them all in one place and, and you can watch them as you need. Uh, but generally what I do is I store these in five gallon uh, food safe. It's not necessarily uh, that important that they're food safe because they're in Mylar bags, but uh, that's what I have are the food safe buckets and they're heavy duty. And the reason that I do that is because these are not rodent proof. A rodent can chew through this. Now, yes, they can also, some people have reported, they've also chewed through heavy duty uh, five gallon buckets. So it really all depends where you're going to be storing your food. If you're going to be storing this in your extended pantry or you know what we call the prepper pantry, and you know that your food will not be susceptible to being attacked more or less by rodents, then yes, you can store your Mylar bag just like this. However, Mylar bags can become damaged. They can get little rips in them and so on and so forth. So I think putting them in some type of container that does give them an extra level of protection is a smart idea. So as I said, I'll go ahead and put these in the five gallon uh, food, uh, long-term food storage buckets that I have. Uh, but some of you have shared with me such a good idea in comments when we were talking about other long-term storage um, containers. And I loved this idea. Uh, some of you said you do the same thing I do. You flatten them out so they're like a little envelope. And then you get those large plastic containers that have like big lids on them. Sometimes they're I'm, I like Rubbermaid type things like that, but you get heavy duty ones and you just put all of your bags uh, because you're really storing up a lot of food and you're putting all of these bags just like this in those large containers. And, you know, they sometimes have a footprint, you know, maybe about the size of this cutting board or even larger. So you're doubling up, you're doing two by two and you're just putting them all in long ways. I think that's a really good idea because you can certainly fit more in those and more efficiently than you can in a five gallon bucket. And then each time you need a bag of rice, boom, or whatever you've stored in your Mylar bag, you just pull that out. Then you put your lid back onto your storage container and back onto your shelf. So you're giving the Mylar bag protection from damage as well as protection from rodents. Now, why do we do this? Why are we taking this rice out of maybe the big 25 or 50 pound bag that we're buying and putting them into uh, Mylar bags with oxygen absorbers? And that's a great question. Storing dry foods in Mylar bags with oxygen absorbers uh, serves a couple of purposes. Number one, it keeps it as fresh as possible for as long as possible. 
and it uh, makes a very unhospitable environment for bugs uh, to proliferate. So if there were any bugs, hopefully because you're pulling out all the oxygen, uh, they're going to die. Or secondly, if there are any eggs, the fact that this is an oxygen-free environment isn't going to allow those eggs to hatch. Now, is it a perfect solution? No, I, I'm not sure other than using diatomaceous earth uh, when you store food in big buckets if there's a perfect solution at killing bugs. But this has been found for the most part to decrease the incidence of bugs. Also, storing dry food in mylar bags with oxygen absorbers really helps extend the shelf life significantly. Now, there are different opinions and different sources on exactly how long uh, this food will last. Uh, given that it is white rice, some will call this uh, what's known as a forever food, and more or less often regardless of how you store it. Uh, but this is definitely going to ensure that maybe it will be a forever food. Some people may say it's good for 40 years, you can open it in 40 years and it'll be great. Some other people will say, some other sources will say maybe 25 years. Uh, but whatever the case may be, you're definitely extending significantly the shelf life of dry goods that you store in Mylar bags with oxygen absorbers. And again, uh, in the description below, I'll have a link to my blog post. Head on over there. I've got lots of links to all kinds of sites uh, that are authoritative sources on how to use mylar bags, how to use oxygen absorbers, what foods you can store in mylar bags with oxygen absorbers, and how long those foods may uh, be preserved in this fashion. Now, if you'd like more information about what are the best types of containers for your long-term food storage for your prepper pantry, as well as information on how to stock your prepper pantry with real food, how to do this on a budget for $5 a week, and then how to use the food that you've got in your prepper pantry and how to make some of it homemade, be sure to click on this video over here. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.